Hello, let me introduce myself. I am Helene Meisler. I cover the U.S. stock market uh, for realmoney.com. And if you want to find me, you can find me there or you can find me on Twitter or X or whatever they call it at H Meisler. And uh, I would highly recommend that if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I do do a uh, chart fest for free every Saturday morning, U.S. time. And so um, come on over and join us. Anyway, this is where the, I currently see the state of the U.S. markets. Short term, nobody needs to tell you we're overbought. I mean, you know, the month of November has been spectacular. You can see the big move from oversold in late October up until the overbought condition now, um, you know, but that's short term. Uh, one thing I would notice that I would consider a short term negative in the market is that the overbought condition, we actually reached it almost a week or so ago and we came off and now we're struggling to even get back to that same overbought condition. So um, that just shows you how we're, we've really lost a lot of the momentum in the market right now on a short term basis. But I like to look at the market. Let's take a step back and look at the market on an intermediate term basis. And on an intermediate term basis, the first thing I look at is what direction are the majority of stocks going? And for that, I use the McClellan summation index. And you can see that bottomed in early November and has been on a tear to the upside. It is also, if you take a look. It is also the first time that it's made a little higher high since it turned down in August. The other thing I would point out here is that it's currently around minus 100. And the summation index, if you look at that zero line, rarely curls back over before it crosses the zero line. <laughs> so I would expect that before this rally runs out of steam, even, even if it runs out of steam in the short term, we would then rally again, but um, on an intermediate term basis. But before this rally, you know, you could call it could put and done. I would just, I think this is going to get over the zero line. But this, this indicator tells us what the majority of stocks are doing. And despite all the complaining about the Magnificent Seven, and as I call it, the other 493, the major most stocks have been going up in the month of November. And now on an intermediate term basis, I like to use a 30 day moving average of the advanced decline line to determine when we might be intermediate term overbought. Uh, while it looks like we're a little overbought here, that's exactly all we are just a little overbought. It's I don't, I just think this would be, a pause that refreshes. I'm thinking early December, we come down, we're a little choppy, and then we probably rally again in, in you know, the latter part of December um, or, or something along those lines. And that's probably around when we'd end up at a full overbought condition. You can see how much more overbought we were going into that July, August high, or even into the February high last year. We're just not nearly as overbought as we were, despite the rally that we've had in November. So uh, that's on it again, an intermediate term basis, which is different than the short term. And here's another indicator I use. This is um, a little bit different in that it's got, I, I look at um, what the upside volume is as a percentage of total volume. And then I smack it on a moving average anyway. When we get down to the low 40% area, which we got down to just over 42% in late October, I consider that oversold. What I consider overbought is something in the mid to upper 50s. And once again, you can see that we got to 57, just a little bit over 57% in July. Even last February, we got almost to 59%. So we're not there. Heck, at the May, at the early May high, having rallied off that um, bank crisis low in March, we were at 54%. So right now we're at 51%, which tells me we're sort of getting towards overbought, but we're not overbought yet.
again, on an intermediate term basis. Now, on a little bit of a shorter term basis, one thing I like to watch is the number of stocks making new highs. And you can see that the number of stocks making new highs on the New York Stock Exchange peaked last week around 120. Yesterday's big rally, uh, that would be Monday, the 20th of November, the big rally couldn't even get to 100 new highs. That's a short-term negative divergence. And again, that goes along with the short-term overboughtness. If we back off and rally again, as I expect we will, and the next rally, we cannot get over 120 new highs, then I consider it an intermediate term negative, and then it becomes very concerning. So for example, again, let's go back to that July high. Look at that big peak over 220 new highs. That showed up, believe it or not, in late June. And every subsequent high in the market it, that we got in July all the way till August kept having fewer and fewer new highs. That is bearish. So right now I'm willing to give it some chance to prove that after we have an oversold, overbought pullback and we rally again, we can have more than 120 new highs, but that still remains to be proven. But right now I consider this just a short-term overbought problem. In terms of sentiment, I like to look at several different indicators. One is the investor's intelligence bullish percentage. And um, we will get the new readings tomorrow. I do expect tomorrow's readings to be higher than last week, but so far we're sitting at 50% bulls, which is leaning more bulls than bears, obviously, but it's nothing earth shattering. Notice again, last summer, we got to 56% bulls. So generally speaking, what I like to use here is when you get over 55% bulls, so 55, 60% bulls to me is way too many. It remains to be seen tomorrow on Wednesday, the 22nd, we will get a new reading because this comes out every week. I do expect it to be higher, I don't know if it'll be quite 55% yet, but we will see. So I would consider this right now, not yet too giddy. Also, I look at the CBO put call ratio on a 10 day moving average. And when it's high, you start to get bullish in the market. You can see the big high heading into 2023. You can see the big high in October earlier this year. You can also see what happened in July when it got all the way down to near 80, 80 on the ratio. Right now, it has taken the month of November. You can see the ratio has hardly come down at all. It has just started to move lower in the last week. All right, so that tells you people are starting to accept the rally. But the 10-day moving average is still over one. And again, if you look, even in February, it got down to what, about 88 or 90. And, and in, again, in July, you got all the way down to 82 and a half. So with it currently over one, you can't say everybody's all in. It feels like they are, but statistically speaking, they're not there yet. I also like to look at the ISE call put ratio. So think of it like the put call ratio inverse. So low readings here are bearish for the market. I'm sorry, are bullish for the market and high readings are bearish for the market. Here you can see, and this tends to be more retail than institutional. Here you can see a major move. Everybody was all in at the July high. They were all in at the February high. And then you can see even what the year 2022 looked like all the way on the left side where you got up to 120, not once, but twice. Um, but notice that we got all the way down to 90 down there in, in, in October, um, which to me was bullish. And now we are sitting at 110. 
this has moved a lot faster with a lot more acceptance of the rally than the CBOE options have. But in general, it's not yet at 120. So it's in the process of gaining bullishness. We are not extreme yet. Um, is it possible that by the time all the intermediate term indicators get overbought, this could be at 120? Entirely possible. Uh, and that's what I would watch for. One other thing I would watch for regarding this ratio is that it normally, if you squint real hard, you can see it normally gets up to 120, takes a breather, and then comes back up and tries it again. It usually what I call double taps it. Um, so the first hit to 120 is not always the most bearish. Usually you have to come back and then go up again. And so that's what I would look for. I would be focusing on this because I think this is a little bit cleaner and a little bit clearer than the CBOE, but I do like it when they both confirm each other. And then here's one other that, that is easy to watch. This is the National Association of Active Investment Managers. And every Wednesday, they are asked what their exposure to the market is. And um, you can go to their website. It comes out U.S. time, maybe around um, 10 or 11 a.m. on Thursday mornings. And this week, maybe not because it's Thanksgiving here in the U.S. But um, currently, their exposure to the market is sitting at 72. You can see at the lows, they got down to 22, uh, which is quite low and therefore bullish. But again, look at July. They were on margin. They were over 100. So again, we see the change in sentiment, but we don't see any extremes yet. Uh, that's what I would watch for if we get this pullback short term and then another rally again, maybe into year end. That's what you start to look for is how much people have changed their sentiment. Are they too complacent? Are they too giddy? So I, I want to finish off with uh, a look at bonds and the dollar here. Um, the yield on the 10 year has come off quite a lot. It's sitting, you know, around 440 right now. And I think it's eventually coming down on an intermediate term basis to 420. Um, and you can see why we've got an uptrend line that comes in around there. You've got a flat support line that comes in around there. And then I have to have another look. My guess is interest rates have peaked at around 5% on the 10 year, but that doesn't preclude that we're, that we can have rallies where, you know, the rate goes from, let's say, 430 back to 460 or 470 and get and we can have a little scare in the market. Um, but that's what I would look for on the yield on the 10 year. And this obviously goes hand in hand with the dollar index. Um, I think the dollar index peaked in early October. Also notice that the dollar index peaked in early October, but stocks didn't bottom until late October. So that was a divergence that was worth watching, the dollar leading. Um, right now, you can see the dollar is coming off. I think the dollar is likely to find a low somewhere in that, call it 102-ish, 101, 102-ish area, again, on intermediate term basis. Now, what I want you to just notice, though, is that if it comes down there, chances are, well, we may turn bullish on the dollar again. But right now, I think the dollar is headed down there on an intermediate term basis. Again, doesn't preclude short term oversold rallies in it, which probably we should get. But because I don't think anything goes down in a straight line. But that's where I think that's headed. And I'm going to finish off with one chart. And it's a very funky looking head and shoulders bottom. I grant you that. But I think the XME, which is metals and mining, looks to me like it wants to break out over that 54 area. And um, that's kind of also, if you think about it, metals and mining would be helped by a lower dollar. So all of that seems to work together. So in conclusion, short term, very short term, we are overbought. Uh, a correction should, should occur. 
we should that should be followed by another rally where then we start looking for inter, possible intermediate term overbought conditions and possible too much bullishness in the market. Uh, so that's where I stand. I hope everybody has a very good holiday season.